Hey everybody, Doug Rucker here with uh, PressureCleaningSchool.com, uh, DougRuckerStore.com. Just wanted to go over real quick a little bit about uh, surface cleaner maintenance and some things that can happen in the field, some repairs you may have to make. One of the most uh, highest, biggest things that ever happens out in the field is clogged nozzles. I always recommend that you don't try to repair the nozzle or unclog the nozzle out in the field. Uh, just have spare nozzles, take the clogged nozzle off and replace it and keep going. Uh, you can waste some time trying to unclog a nozzle out in the field, so you always want to make sure you have backup nozzles. Um, this will save you a lot of time. The other thing you want to make sure that you're doing is testing the nozzles uh, before every use to make sure you don't have a clog. You don't want to get going and then have to stop and make the repair. So we always check them before we get going on every uh, concrete cleaning job that we're using the surface cleaner. And we basically will flip it over. I'll show you in a minute uh, an easy way to do it. Hold the bar. We'll slightly uh, release the ball valve or pull the trigger. Um, and mainly we use the ball valve so we don't have to get full pressure coming out, but we'll just slowly turn it and make sure the spray patterns are all equal. There's no clog in them, um, nothing that's going to cause uneven type cleaning. So big tip, just keep spare nozzles on hand. Use a 9 16 inch wrench. That's another thing you want to have on hand so that when you take these off, I've already loosened this, you have the proper wrench. Take it off, put another one in. When you uh, put these back on, make sure you screw them down and get, I'm trying to do things left handed here get this part, this little ridge, all the ridge on all of these surface cleaner nozzles have to be lined up. So you don't want it like that. You want this little ridge parallel going with the surface cleaner bar. So what we do once we replace it, we take the one that's clogged and if it's fairly new and still usable, we will put it into a little baggie in the truck. Once I get about 10 or 12 of them, um, I'll spend time at the shop and go through uh, in my spare time and, and unclog them all using a welder cleaner tip that you can get at Lowe's or Home Depot's. Um, again, that's a welder's cleaning tip tool. And uh, also we use our dental pick set that we use for removing O-rings. Sometimes you can get the little piece of sand out of there. But you want to get the little piece of sand or grit that's clogging it up. Get it released, blow through it a couple times, make sure that the piece of grit got all the way out, blow through it from both ends, and then get it back in. And again, line up your uh, little ridge there so uh, it works properly. So the other thing that happens is sometimes you have to replace the cartridge or you have to replace an O-ring on a cartridge. And that involves taking the actual surface cleaner bar off. For that, you want a 7 16 inch wrench down at the bottom. I mean, I'm sorry, up at the top. Like that. And then you have a, the 9 16 inch wrench goes down at the bottom. What I normally is take this, I take this and turn it upside down so it kind of will pin inside one of these bolts or against a ridge and then I can remove the surface cleaner bar fairly easily. Just spin it off, set it aside and then I'll take a, a rubber mallet or something, my hand if I can and just kind of push this through, that's the cartridge. But before you do that, you've got to take off the top part of the cartridge. Again, you can use just an adjustable style wrench or the right size open-ended wrench. That part's going to screw off, and uh, that's what you have there. And then your seal will come out, just like this. 
And if you look at these seals, you'll see you've got an O-ring up here that can go bad. There's an O-ring there that can go bad. Um, so those are the O-rings that you either have to replace, have the right size, or just replace the whole cartridge with a set like this. That's normally what I do is just replace the cartridge. These cartridges last a while. Um, so once the cartridge goes bad, if I don't have the right O-rings or whatever, then I'll replace it. Um, but these can cause it to start spraying out of the top or through the bottom. Um, just kind of cause you all kind of problems. So you always want to have one of these on hand as well. And then a lot of people don't know, but down at the bottom here is called right here. I hope you can see that, but right inside here, this little circle piece, there's what's called a quad seal. <coughs> Excuse me. And sometimes that can go bad too. And uh, what I normally do is take a flashlight, look at it real good. If it looks good, I won't fight trying to replace it. It can be kind of cumbersome trying to get that thing out and getting it replaced. But if it looks good, then I don't often replace it. I think over the last 10 or 15 years, I've probably replaced that seal once on a surface cleaner. Um, so, but it is a good idea to always check it when you've got it apart. But that's the quad seal. Um, and as a matter of fact, when you get your kit, your cartridge kit, there's a little bag in here. I can get it out. And that's all that little baggie has in it is the quad seal. And that's where that goes. And it's got uh, directions on here, replace quad seal when needed insert brass bushing located at bottom of bearing housing and adjust if twisted that's what that is right there okay and so when you get these little cartridge assemblies you've got a nice little parts list here for you tells you what all they have the part numbers the o-ring sizes uh, not the o-ring sizes but the o-ring part numbers everything is right there so you can get those uh, pieces or those parts and uh, keep those on hand in case you ever have a problem. Let me put this back in. So that's the cartridge assembly. Um, again, the O-rings are what caused the biggest problem with irregular spraying or spraying out of the top this back down because I'm going to show you in a minute. Um, how we uh, and then I can put my bar back on. I do use Teflon tape right here on this. It says not to hand tighten but I've never had an issue but what I'll do is take my 9 16 The instructions will tell you not to do what I'm doing, but I've never had an issue with it. I've been doing it for quite a few years. Um, hand tighten down, and then I take my wrench and just give it a nice little snug. It doesn't have to be, don't crank down on it real hard, all right? So the big tip is when you're out in the field, the nice thing about these Whisper Wash Classics or some of the other uh, surface cleaners that have this quick net fitting up here. Very easy to take this uh, hose off, put your ball valve right under there, then you can turn it off and you've got your hand back here and one person, you can stand back here, barely turn it, make sure nobody's out there in front of you, and you can barely turn it and check the spray pattern when you're out in the field, okay? That's a very simple, easy way to check your nozzles. So I hope this helps you guys. The other thing is make sure that this hose here that goes in there, make sure you pull this out occasionally, rub a little sandpaper around it. That way it doesn't get stuck from the ball bearings seating inside here, causing burrs and uh, actually grind themselves into that little ridge there and making it hard to get off when you need to. So make sure you stay on top of at least once a week or so. Just pull this out sand it with a little sandpaper, stick it back in, 
and you won't have that problem. So hope that helps you guys on our surface cleaners. Uh, once the gun goes bad at the end, we just eliminate the gun and we put just a tip on it and then put, uh, then all we have to do is put our ball valve in it. We, we kind of bypass the gun, but we leave the gun on there and zip tie it. Um, where did it go? Right there. Zip tie the gun because we got a ball valve that we stick on there and turn it on and off at the ball valve. But um, it's kind of hard to tell when the gun goes bad when you've always got it open like that. But uh, after a while, we just kind of replace it. So hopes that hope that helped you guys. Um, please let me know if you have any questions. You can email me, uh, my students just email me at pressurecleaningschool at gmail.com if you have any questions on it. Again, don't forget our online video school. Uh, if you're brand new to the business, uh, it will drastically help you cut your learning curve. Thank you so much and uh, hope you guys have an awesome day.